Welcome back to Supercharge Your Manifest and Power series. And we continue talking about that manifestation is powerful, manifestation is real. And based on everybody's story, you could connect yourself and understand that if you move confidently in the direction that you want, you can manifest anything you desire. And today I have Melinda as my guest. And Melinda, please introduce yourself and tell what you are doing. Yes. Hi. Thank you, Irina, first for having me as part of your summit. I am super excited to be here. Uh, gosh, I have so many stories, so this is going to be super fun to dive into. But basically, who I am is I'm an intuitive and energetic business and leadership mentor. I help people realize that you have the power within you to manifest your dreams, right? So that means opening up your intuition and really listening to guidance and then taking action and also trusting. And that is the simple equation. But often we get a little bit tied up in that. So I'm here to help and um, share some stories to enlighten you all today. So thanks again for having me. That's so beautifully said. And Melinda, share your first experience. How did you figure out that intuition is something like that small voice that actually guiding us and helping us on our way? Yeah. Well, first of all, I want to say to set like the stage here that um, I'm almost 53. So <laughs> the majority of my life was prior to the internet. So I didn't realize what intuition was really prior to these last few years. So um, if you weren't someone who grew up, you know, watching YouTube videos and consuming content and all the books there are out there now and, you know, TED Talks and all the things, right? Some it's like this. Like often we were just going through our lives and not really realizing that we had this amazing power and gift within us. So I can go back as like far back as like high school. And when I was in high school, I so badly wanted to go away to college. Like I would sit and dream and fantasize about going to college. I was the oldest child, wanted to explore and college to me sounded so fun. And I um, was really lucky. My parents pretty much were like, you can pick wherever you want to go. And I visited lots of schools and I settled on one school. I was like, I want to go to Purdue University. They had retail management as a career. I wanted to be a buyer for large retailers. And I thought it was going to be super, super fun to go to that uh, university. So I went and visited the campus and I only applied for one college, <laughs> one university and I got in early acceptance. So wow. that was kind of where I started to just not even realize what I was doing, but being like, okay, I can like kind of, you know, pick things I want to do and see if they happen. And I didn't even really have like this full conscious awareness of it, but it was starting to like grow in me. And so then I started to kind of pick different companies that I wanted to work for. I was like, oh, I love like Saks Fifth Avenue. So I actually had a job interview um, when I was graduating from school with Saks Fifth Avenue, downtown Chicago in the store. And they were like, you know, you're overqualified to work in the store. You, you just graduating from this you know, program. You should be in a buying office. And I was like, okay. So I like put it on the back burner, went through, you know, years of my life. I had some other jobs in Chicago and, um, then in 1996, so yes, I'm dating myself, but just to show the timeline, you know, I graduated in 93. So just three short years later, I ended up moving to New York city and working for Saks Fifth Avenue in the buying office. So it's just, it was like, okay, I put it out there that I wanted to work for Saks Fifth Avenue. And then I got that job. Right. So I'm starting to kind of like connect the dots on this thing, but I still not really understanding mm -hmm. what was going on. And then after that, you know, it just kind of kept continuing. I ended up getting a job with Victoria's Secret Stores as 
a merchant. And that was something I'd put out there in high school. I started following the limited brands um, in terms of like their stock performance. It was part of a high school assignment to, you know, watch a stock. So I started becoming obsessed with like Les Wexner and the limited brands and that whole journey. And I was like, I would love to work for the limited someday. When Victoria's Secret at that time was under the limited brands umbrella. And I ended up being a merchant for Victoria's Secret. So it is crazy. It's it's really amazing. But you, you have to put it out there, not get obsessed with it, take actions all the time and not worry about time. And just know that, you know, eventually if it's meant for you, somewhere, some way, somehow, in the how we don't know, it will happen for you. And it's just been this crazy crazy ass journey and it doesn't stop. <laughs> oh my God. I just love what you shared and you are right. It just like once we want something like really, really having that desire to have it right, because it has to be something that it's not that we are not changing our mind tomorrow. Right. It has mm -hmm. to be something that we truly desire from the bottom of our heart. And once we set that intention and claim it, we know it's all the matter of time. And like you said, you don't attach yourself when and how it's going to show up because the universe is going to deliver exactly what you want or even better. Mm -hmm. Yes, exactly. And what was funny too about the limited story is that was another company I had interviewed with when I was still like in the graduating from college. I, my dad um, came, drove me to the limited brands, like the limited stores. And I didn't get that job. Right. So I still like had another experience where I didn't get the first time I interviewed, but then I got it later and in a better way. So um, so I think that just understanding, like if it doesn't happen for you when you thought maybe it would and you got all excited, like don't get discouraged because we're all here on this huge journey, right? And it may appear in another way. And that is the manifestation, you know, manifest just means it happened, right? So like the fun part of manifestation that we love to talk about is when those big, you know, dreams and goals and desires manifest. And um, for me, that just happened like in a better way than even what I originally thought could have happened. So I think that's like really important. So. Then what you know happened in my life journey is the corporate world and society really like started like bogging me down, and I um, probably became a little too obsessed with what I should become in terms of you know listening to people and changing my behavior, and I lost sight of a, a lot of myself, and I think that that's. Um, a journey that a lot of people, especially like my age as a Gen Xer are going through is like, okay, I lost myself somewhere in all of this. And I think it's really important to be aware of that also in terms of social media, because social media can easily do that to people too. And I had to kind of like rewire a lot of those um, things and unpack a lot uh, over the years to kind of get back to me and that's when it really started to click. I was like, oh my gosh, all these things like can can really happen. And we just have to stay focused and take the action and, and trust. So yeah, it's our own inner GPS. <laughs> yes. And I, I just love what you shared, Melinda. It's um, also telling that a lot of times we do not know everything what the universe has in plan for us, right? Like you mentioned, even something, if doesn't something work out, it means something is better on the way. And if we actually focus on that, that with the time, things are going to unfold we, and we understand why that situation was given to us earlier that might uh, trigger us and get us upset. But now we understand that the outcome that we received even so much better than what we expected. And I think that's exactly what we always have to lean on. So if something didn't work out, it didn't mean that, uh, you know, it's the failure. It means just something is better, is brewing in the sky. And whenever the outcome is ready for you, it's just going to drop. Yes, yes. And and that's where so many people give up or they get discouraged. 
And I think that is really important. If anyone takes anything away from this conversation, it's just really understanding that. And there's conflicting views out there where people will be like, well, the universe doesn't test you. And then other people will say the universe tests you. Well, so we just kind of keep going. So just, just keep on going. So if you happen to be in that bucket of being discouraged as you're working on something, like try it a different way, like change it up, you know, put it on the back burner for a while. And then all of a sudden, you know, it, it may come, th come through another way that you weren't expecting and you'll be pleasantly surprised. I totally love what you are sharing, especially like you said that, a lot of times we are not aware about the things, right? And mm -hmm. our job is to focus on the process because anyways, we are growing, we are doing something with our life. Our life doesn't stop when we receive something that we truly desired or we didn't receive, right? We still continue breathing. We still continue doing what we are doing, right? So rather than focusing on the outcome, when and how it's going to show up, let's focus on present moment. Let's yeah. just enjoy the process, right? Okay, something didn't work out. Let me see how I can tweak it and how I can do it something differently in order to have different results. And I think that's the majority of people that are not aware of it. So they get really upset when something doesn't work out yet. If they focus on the process rather than the result, they'll see how much easier and better they're going to feel in the process. Yeah. Yeah. You nailed it, girl. It's it's just so true. And, you know, a lot of people talk about being in the void. I mean, I've talked about being in the void. I've felt being in the void. Right. And it's not a fun feeling. <laughs> I'll be honest. I'm sure everyone can raise their hand high. Yes. That Yes. Being oh, in the no. void is not a fun oh. feeling. But it's, you know, things working themselves out. Right. Like if you have this big goal and dream on your heart and there's you know, moving parts and pieces and, you know, relationships that need to be formed or things that need to be purchased. Like, that's a lot. That's a lot. <laughs> and we don't have yes. control over all the things, right? So I know I have definitely got caught up in that and I have to remind myself. So I'm sharing this for everyone else out there that just needs that reminder that, you know, sometimes there's just things that we can't control. So we have to just stay the course and stay focused and, and maybe, you know, do some other things to change up your energy or change up your schedule in the meantime. And, um, you know, don't lose that trust that it, it's going to happen for you. I love this. I love this. Um, Melinda, so can you share some tools or techniques, how people can tune into that intuition? Yes. And I talk about this a lot. And I'm going to keep hammering it home, even if it triggers the heck out of all of you. <laughs> but that is eliminate distractions. So you really have to be super intentional with how you spend your time, your screen time, your phone, your computer. Um, you know, what are you listening to? What are you watching? Like, are you really getting anything from that? Like, if I go to watch a video, if I don't get something from it, like, I move, I, I turn it off. It is better to be in silence, like literally in dead silence than to be trying to find something to fill that space. So um, I love this series. It's extremely intentional. So I want you to be like, okay, yes, like I can take action and I learn something from this and then use this series as a point of comparison, perhaps again, with other things that maybe you've been listening to that you're like, yeah, I, like I really don't get anything from this. It's just like two people like blah, blah, blah about the weather for an hour. Like, does it really matter? No. So like use your discernment to make decisions and eliminate at least like 25% of the stuff you're consuming and your intuition will just flourish. And when you start to like listen and understand and go, okay, that was like an intuitive hit. Um, some people call them downloads. Some people just call it direction, you know, whatever you want to call it. It's good. Um, and you start to listen to that and you start to trust it and be appreciative of it. Like it'll start to grow. And, you know, it's just like everything, right? It's a muscle. So, you know, just, just keep on doing that and don't fall back into the pattern of like, scrolling mindlessly on, you know, TikTok or Reels or, or Facebook, like be intentional with your time. 
if you're on social media, like use it to connect, use it to promote your business, use it to share something from the heart instead of just like mindlessly scrolling. I think if everyone just did like 25% less of the junk, like you would be like amazed at how your life will turn around. It's like magic. <laughs> yes, totally. And I love what you shared and what comes for me. Like you mentioned, it's a muscle, right? So basically we all have the intuition, but a lot of people have it like so deep down since they never actually use it and they think that, oh, I'm not intuitive. I can't pick up on the signs. Everybody can, but mm -hmm. it just takes practice, right? Like yeah. anything, whatever skill we want to learn, if we were to learn how to ride the bike, we know that once we sit down, we're just going to fall off, at least for me, for sure, right? Mm -hmm. I have to learn how to keep that balance on these two wheels. So the same thing, whatever we start learning, we know that it's going to take time for us before we become good at it. But yes. if you do it on a daily basis, like, is there any practice that uh, people can do? Like, I understand, yeah, it's very important to be intentional in what you are doing. And then what's interesting, like you were mentioning, scrolling them, social media. And what comes for me, like sometimes uh, we don't even realize the power of our thoughts and our mind. Because sometimes if I want something, and I put a little bit of attention to that, then I might pop it up on my screen, you know, either I'm on social media or on the Google, and the information I was longing for is going to show up, it's going to present. Again, it's also the part of the intuition because we kind of trust. We, we trust mm -hmm. the process. We know that whatever is relevant to, to us, it's going to show up. And even the thing that you are here with us today, uh, signed up for this series, you know, it wasn't just coincidence because your intuition actually guided you. And a lot of times people don't even connect the dots. Like you mentioned, Belinda, you, you, you used to do that, right? Mm -hmm. So a lot of people think that things just happen in life, that it's just like uh, the chain of different events, but the, nothing is happening for no reason, right? So yeah. It means that your intuition guided you because there is something for you to learn. There is something for you to pick up and maybe start, um, you know, partnering with somebody who you liked as uh, the expert because beautiful experts, beautiful people. Like I always say, I don't care who you're going to partner with, but please work with the coach because yeah. it's going to get you so much further in life as opposed to you just struggling on your own. Yes. Gosh, you like said so many golden things. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. This, uh, so yes. So first of all, I'll address the last thing you just said, which was, you know, partnering with a coach because I've been in this lane um, as a coach for years now and everyone works with so many different coaches. So if you're a coach out there that is struggle, like ever, like I have like, many coaches I work with at the same time and I'm a coach, right? So you're right. Like just, we shouldn't have to be in a place of um, competition over that because there, there is, there's just so much opportunity. So go where you're guided. So um, I have had the same experiences. It's so funny. I had one the other day. I, with, with, you know, um, being intentional, I, I, I can, I do consume YouTube. That is my go-to platform. I'm on YouTube. I have a YouTube channel and I consume YouTube. And, um, you know, sometimes I'll be like wanting to consume something, right? Like um, the, from the car, let's say, and I'll, and I'll actually kind of like ask the universe to show me something in that like topic. And sure as shit, it'll like pop up. <laughs> so right. Crazy. And then, um, you know, and sometimes too, like you'll get like a random video. I think YouTube's just the the best for this in my opinion but mm -hmm. you'll get like a random video and you'll be like oh, i needed to watch that thank you spirit team so right. yeah. so you are 100 percent correct so you can use it in your favor to help you um through you know what you're working on or what you're struggling with or how you're feeling like like different things can pop up in a positive way um, as far as um, distractions or a coach will come across your path and you're like, oh, maybe, you know, she has a, a powerful message or he mm -hmm. that can help you with something today. So I love that. Thank you for sharing that. It's amazing. Absolutely. And you know what really uh, 
works for me for the intuition as a reminder. Mm -hmm. We know that our intuition is not frantic. If we receive that impulse, it's going to come like, you know, confident and definite, right? There are no emotions attached. And it usually comes in the first three to five seconds. Mm -hmm. And I would love to invite everybody who is going to be listening to that. Just start paying attention at that, right? Because yes. sometimes when you go and attend the event and then you have that pull like, oh my God, I want to enroll in that program or I want to try it, right? And just pay attention for three to five seconds. And after that, our analytical mind comes yes, in. Yes, the air pops in. Absolutely. Yes. Mm -hmm. And our logic is going to find all the reasons why we shouldn't do that. Yes, it's so true. I've talked about that a lot. And that has been, um, I had learned that from someone who channels. So um, everything you said, I'm going to like 100% agree with you that yes, our intuition is our higher mind guiding us. And then our ego pops in with all the reasons why you shouldn't do it, or that person may not like you, or um, you, you may fail, you know, and want to keep you comfortable. And that's your ego trying to keep you safe. And you have to really um, practice discernment and, um, and, you know, I don't say everyone, you know, should do everything so radically and so fast, you know, but the mindfulness around that, I think is really important to understand that. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. And if you're I doubting yourself all the time, you're not going to go anywhere. <laughs> right. Right. And what I think is also important to notice how you feel in that moment, right? When mm -hmm. you just first receive the news and how does it make you feel if it makes you feel inspired if it makes you feel motivated and like you know like your heart is beating faster right you realize this is something that is going to be good for me yes right? yes if you're lit up if you're lit up i think there's a lot of conversation actually it's going to do some content around this um you know a lot of coaches will say you know i'm excited or you know they use that word excited and i've heard that used a lot but like i had to do a lot of inner work on like well what is that mean because my personality type my normal emotional state is not like a kangaroo bumping up bump, you know <laughs> bouncing off the walls like that's just not <laughs> me so right. that is not good for me to try to be like a kangaroo bouncing off the walls because that's just not how i am so mm -hmm. I'm like okay what is excitement so excitement to me is i'm, I'm a code cracker so when I crack a code or have these next level thoughts and patterns and, and connect dots on things, like I'm like, yes, that's mm -hmm. my excitement, right? And so my husband and I have these discussions and um, my husband and I have a, a business together for the last over 12 years. And, um, and so I asked him the other day, you know, I'm like, what, like when you think about it in that terms, like what excites you? Cause he's also not a kangaroo, you know, woo, popping champagne. Mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. And and he said for him it's when he finds like something new for his fishing because he's a turbo boat captain and he's a coach for fishing. So when he finds something new to try, like that's his excitement, right? So you have to think outside the box in terms of like what is your excitement because um, and then that goes back to your gift. I mean, it really does. Like my gift, my zone of genius is also what I'm excited about. See, so there's a click there. If Next my, time. if my gift was, you know, popping balloons and champagne all day and then, yeah, and like, and things like that, like buying a new expensive handbag, like, sure. Then that's my gift, my zone of genius, that channel of goods, perhaps. And maybe I should be marketing like whatever, but that's just not it for me. Right. That's it for the other person. So I think really tapping into and thinking about it and all it takes and this is kind of segueing back to what you were saying earlier that I wanted to add in is awareness. And, you know, so many of us, like we just keep going on autopilot, you know, we have busy days and especially if you're a mom, like you got kids, you got to pick them up. You got to go to soccer. You got to go dance. You got to do this. You got to do that. You got to do this. You got to do this. And you're so exhausted that your whole brain is consumed with all this stuff that you're not paying attention <laughs> to what does make you excited? Or that was an intuitive hit. Like I should like look into this, right? So slowing down, which is also kind of something you said. So just kind of drawing drawing that out a little further, um, is it's crucial. It's really crucial to um, be able to to do this work and have it show up as we all would like it to show up, right? 
So yes, I love it. I love what you shared, Melinda. And also, like for me, if people are asking, how can I recognize the intuition? I said that intuition very much your heart, right? Mm -hmm. yes. Ego is our head. We cannot uh, kind of, you know, uh, take apart both of them. We bo we need both of them in order to create exactly what we want in our life. But a lot of times we give more power to our brain, to our logic, to our analytical mind, and we kind of ignore our heart. But I think what's important when we are working with the intuition to really connect with our heart. And ask the questions. If we are still in doubt, I think um, it's good just to keep asking ourselves the questions and see what how we feel about yeah. these questions and the answers that we are receiving. Because our heart, our intuition always speaks to us. And it's yeah. our job to start paying attention. Yeah. So many people ignore the heart factor. And it's unfortunate that it's not talked about as much online as some other things, but it is really important. Like there's a lot of science in that. Um, there's a great book called The Heart Code. Uh, yeah, there's there's a lot there, but it's so simple. If you just sit again and like take a minute, <laughs> right? And focus on your heart. And I, you know, I do this activity with people in my workshops a lot. Just like send love out from your heart. Just imagine and visualize. And some people have struggled with visualize when they can work on that. That's a muscle as well. And just, you know, visualize sending love to people. Like that's just like such a gift. Um, you, some people say, you know, there's a boundary there, blah, 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 blah. But, you know, if it's your family, if it's a client, you know, things like that, it is truly harmless. Like, but just be a little mindful there. So, um, so that's like for sure. And then also too, what people, sorry, my dog's barking, but people don't realize is our brains like in science are just processing centers. So there's no fresh ideas coming from your brain. It's all information that's been put in there somewhere along the line from your memories, from your experience, from reading, from watching this podcast, whatever. So you're always pulling from data versus creating fresh data. And that's where um, the difference between, you know, your intuition and your brain comes in as far as like going, oh, that's like totally new. I'm going to try that today. That's like a little download for you. So yeah, there's there's so much goodness. And I hope everyone loves this. Yes, it's so beautiful. <laughs> uh, yes, thank you so much, Melinda. I love everything that you shared, a lot of wisdom, a lot of gems. So I'm pretty sure the listeners uh, can try and see whatever works for them and tune in more to their intuition, realize, and it's very powerful and it doesn't have any logic because sometimes when you have this intuitive impulse, you would be like, why do I have to stop by that store? Like, I don't even have to purchase anything. Like why it just like my, my, my feet, I just walk in there. Right. Yeah. And it's interesting enough because maybe in that store, you're going to bump into somebody mm -hmm. who is going to talk to you about something that you are actually looking for the answers. Yeah. So, yeah. Yes. Just keep your mind open for the possibilities and continue exploring your intuition. Like we mentioned intuition, everybody has it, but it's mm -hmm. the muscle that has to be developed. So um, good luck with experiencing and doing something about it. And Melinda, tell us a little bit about your free gift. Yes, yes. So I keep it really simple. My website is my name, melindavanfleet.com. People can follow me on Instagram, melinda underscore Van Fleet, um, LinkedIn, Facebook, YouTube. My podcast is the Success Codes podcast. And everything is on my website. So again, melindavanfleet.com. And I have a free gift on my website called the Believe and Take Action Daily Guide. So it's a beautiful guide I, I put together and, it, and I tried all these other um, free gifts, but everyone just loves that one the best. So I've, I've kept that one over the years and I hope you enjoy it too. So check out um, my website. My podcasts are on there. Everything's on my website. It's really my home, my home base. And uh, please connect with me. I'd love to hear that you, you found me through Irina's summit. I think that would be amazing. That would make me the happiest if you just gave me a little shout out. But that's how you found me. I think that would be so cool. Thank you. Thank you so much, Belinda. It was great to see you. And thanks for all your wisdom and everything that you shared. And um, 
for people who are going to be watching, reach out and check it out and uh, see if you want to develop your intuition further. Reach out to Melinda. Thanks awesome. so much and see you on another episode. Thank you.